Up next, students score some major points with a basketball legend. And a special birthday brings presents from the past. All this and more. Frisco ISD TV starts now. Hello and welcome to Frisco ISD TV. I'm Ethan Newman. And I'm Sandra Tinney. Thanks for tuning in. In its elementary, my dear, students and teachers get their heads in the game with a smart way to raise money. Valerie Vasquez has more. Kurtzinger changes the channel on traditional fundraising by bringing a popular game show to the classroom while becoming a little part of Titan Pride. PTA Chairperson Missy Edkins McAnally shared how the event went from athletic to mental for their major fall event in order to raise the audience's participation. The main goal initially was to help raise money for Kurt Singer, but it turned into an idea to instill more school pride um, in just more getting out and running around. Like many schools throughout Frisco ISD, Kurt Singer has done fun runs in the past. However, they decided to run in a different direction. They created Are You Smarter Than a Tiny Titan? Based on the quiz game show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? We wanted to do something that was more mental, more challenging than getting the kids out and just having them run around for a little while. Yes, the running and the exercise and the physical activity is good, but we wanted the kids to use their brains as well. They took a chance and won the crowd over. Initially, we were a little scared, for lack of a better word, um, about how the kids would react because it is such a different idea than um, the idea of Booster Thon and getting out and doing a fun run. But as we started sending materials home, the little bit of skepticism, I think, that was sort of underlying how this would go was eventually turning into this is actually going to work and the kids are really going to like it. Well, I liked it because it kind of it feels like you're on TV, but you're really just competing with your school. It felt like you weren't really in school, and like, I like imagined it like I was actually in a game show and I wasn't in school. And yeah, the, the people in the crowd, everybody in my grade was like the audience and stuff. It was funny whenever the teachers would get it incorrect. You got to learn what they were good at and what they weren't, and like how they could help you and how you could help them. Students got pledges for how many questions they got correct and raised close to $30,000. They plan to buy curriculum, desk dividers, and even iPad minis with the money earned. These tiny titans play for a way to become champions of their school. I'm Valerie Vasquez for Frisco ISD TV. I bet that was fun. I wish my school could do something like that. I know, what a fun way to get paid for knowledge. Lights and sirens were on the scene earlier this school year at Roach Middle School, and the outcome has brought scientific conclusions. Danny Sheehan analyzes the data. An accident in the lab has left one middle school student with a project that has own picture-perfect connection. And at Roach Middle School, a flash fire left one student with serious burns after a chemistry experiment went terribly wrong. Caitlin Shawcross was taking photos for her school's yearbook when a science experiment gone wrong caused her to be chemically burned. She was flown to Parkland Hospital, treated for first and second degree burns, and released at the end of the night. Now she's using her recovery to aid in schoolwork. Caitlin's project was driven by what occurred here at the school. She was released the same night, and the next day I went to go visit her, and I talked to her because she's been such, um, so positive and so strong throughout the whole ordeal. I told her that, you know, we should try to formulate a science fair project around what you're having to go through. With that in mind, Caitlin developed her project. I'm seeing um, which kind of medications uh, help increase your, the like healing rate of burns and if they give any side effects. She can't test on live animals due to the fair's rules. However, she's still learning what she needs to know. She's going to websites uh, and 
which, where there's like chat rooms where support groups are, and she's getting information through other people of how they were cared for with their first and second degree burns and what product they used and kind of how the healing was going. So Caitlin's healing has actually progressed along very nicely. There's been some difficulties in her online research. Finding like people who have the same degrees as me and have actually told about it. She's even found some strange effects. One of them, it like changes the skin color, it like bleaches it. Caitlin's peers are glad to see her back and support her in any way. They have been supporting me through the entire thing and if they see anything online that could possibly help me, they let me know. The student body um, treats her like they always did. They were very supportive and were very glad she came back to school within a week of the accident. She you know, didn't care about people looking at her and still she wasn't fully healed and still not fully healed, but everyone just treats it like normal day for her and they were just really glad to see her back in school and okay. Following doctor's orders, Caitlin's healing seems to be moving along very well. Hopefully this has been a great learning experience alongside an even better recovery. I'm Danny Sheehan for Frisco ISD. TV. Wow, that was an amazing story. It's nice to know she made a great recovery. Yes, we're all glad she's okay. It seems her injuries haven't scarred her spirits. In higher learning, two students have started an organization with hopes of a worldwide change. Kyle Kang has more on the inspiration behind their mission. Two girls have come together for a first at Wakeland High School. She's the first hopes to show students care by reaching beyond borders. The program is an organization where we sponsor girls from underdeveloped countries in um, Africa, South America. Right now we're actually sponsoring two girls from South Sudan. Students Sahara Khan and Tara Kuravilla credit a variety of values for bringing this group to Wakeland. We started the program because we were truly inspired by all these women who work so hard and by even our own parents who tell us about gender equality and how it's not happening in education. I started the program because I was really inspired by its message and I wanted to help girls get out of poverty with um, providing them education, which I thought was really cool. Although both males and females can become members, the program is catered to young women. Generally, boys have the upper hand in the developing nations because girls are forced into early child marriage and childbirth and just awful things. Hopefully, this first provides a way for students to connect and impact women on a global scale. I'm Kyle Kang for Frisco SD TV. What a great way to offer a helping hand. Definitely. The CTE Center Culinary Arts class made breakfast for champions. Abby Cumnock cooked up the story in high-tech happenings. Studio 08 Restaurant doesn't take appetites for granted. The grand reopening Waffles for Wishes raised money for a national organization. The week before we open, I always want to do that community outreach program. Something big that lets the community and the district know that we're open. You know, come and dine. We're open to the public. You don't have to be a district member. In May, I was literally just searching the internet trying to think of what could we do. I want to do something really big. And, uh, and literally, I don't know how it happened, but popped up on my screen, this Make-A-Wish Foundation, this great breakfast called Waffles for Wishes. And I was like, I'm on it. Let's do it. You know, that'll be really exciting. Student chefs cooked up knowledge beyond what was in the pan and on the grill. This class, it's about as real world as it gets. You're in a real kitchen um, and you're serving real people. So it's pretty much just like learning in the real world. One of the goals um, when we decided to put this together is we always like to do a community outreach program, something that will help the kids understand what's going on in the community, uh, understand what Make-A-Wish is all about. Uh, you know, we have families out there who need assistance. And so I really wanted the students to get a, a good idea of what they can do to help within the community. Uh, you know, we, as high school students, they've got so many things on their minds and they're you know, trying to keep it together and planning college and all of this. And it's an important thing for them to think outside of themselves. So I really want to teach the life lesson of giving back, always. They seem to enjoy giving more than just a warm breakfast. It feels really good giving back to charity and uh, seeing how people enjoy the food that I cook. It means a lot. The opportunity to help all these um, terminally ill kids, uh, it, it means a lot. I kind of call it a God deal uh, because it literally came up on my screen. I'm not even sure how. I don't remember what ha how it happened, but there it was. And I'm like, oh, we got to do this. This will be fun. The chef seemed pleased with the opportunity it gave CTE Center culinary students.
We couldn't have been happier with today's turnout. The students were outrageously good. They had fun. They enjoyed themselves. They got to interact. They prepared great food. I think for them it was a great, great day. We had great community participation, great uh, participation through the Texas Restaurant Association, through the Greater Dallas Restaurant Association, through the, um, the administration from our school district, and we look forward to it being even bigger next year. The Studio 08 fundraiser, Waffles for Wishes, collected $3,700 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm Abby Cumnock, Frisco ISD, TV. Oh man, those waffles look awesome. I know, right? When Frisco ISD campus celebrated a very special birthday. Tyler James has more from the party. Frisco's past and present came together as Acker Special Program Center celebrated its 50th anniversary. Acker's history has made it one of the most unique facilities in Frisco. Around the time of the JFK assassination, uh, we opened up our doors kind of mid-year to uh, Acker Special Programs, and that's where we had our, the birth of really our first elementary school. Until they opened Acker in 1963, all the students in Frisco were housed over on Maple Street at what we call the SOC today. First grade through 12th grade were all in the same building. So when they opened up Acker in 1963, this was a huge deal for Frisco. We were a small community then, and everyone loves this place. I started teaching in Frisco in 1972, 42 years ago, but I became the principal of Acker in 1987 and was a principal here for 11 years. I was the fourth principal of Acker Elementary. With Acker's long history come many memories shared by current and former staff and students. We're a very diverse school. We got lots of children that didn't know any English when they came into the school. Here's one right here. He knew absolutely not one word of English when he walked in at Acker's doors. He's a graduate of the University of North Texas and is employed by Frisco ISD now as our at-risk. Person. Person. <laughs> this is Javier Gaona. <laughs> it's the Kevin Bacon, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of story for Acker. Everybody that comes through our doors has some kind of memory or they went to school here or that was my third grade classroom. So it is amazing how much this building has meant to Frisco and its community. One of the things I really remember is on the playground. We weren't allowed to go to the very back of the playground because of the bushes and the teachers wouldn't be able to see us. So we made up this rumor that apparently had been around for a long time that there was a goat man that lived back there in the bushes, which is why we weren't allowed back there. But really it was just a safety issue for the teachers. So we had great memories of telling stories of the goat man that lived in the playground. So just remembering how huge Mr. Mooneyham seems when we were here. He's I felt like he was eight feet tall and went around forever. And seeing him today, and he seemed way more human. <laughs> My dad was the first principal here at Acker. He opened the school and was the principal here for a number of years. He was a very firm principal. I think every boy from about 1963 to about 1980 thought they'd been paddled by him. Though he claims he never did that. They all felt like they had been. Everyone loved my dad, but they knew my dad was business and he ran a very tight ship. The school has come a long way from its roots as an elementary school in the 1960s, and the attendees were full of optimism for the future. It's just amazing how much Frisco has grown since I was born here. I've seen such a huge change in all the Frisco schools, and I really hope that they can continue to use this building just like they've converted it for the offices and other things they've used it for because, you know, there are so many people in Frisco that have this connection with Acker that it's really important, I think, that we continue to utilize it. These halls are filled today with older Frisco people. And you can hear from the, the way they're chatting, when older Frisco people get together, it's a good time. But we also have new Frisco people here, and the blending of the two makes this a great place to live and work. Acker may not be as modern as the other schools in Frisco ISD, but it seems just as popular as it was 50 years ago, and has proven to be a memorable place. I'm Tyler James for Frisco ISD TV. We'd now like to congratulate an FHS 2013 grad on a very special scholarship. The Nancy Lieberman Foundation held a press conference this summer at the Dr. Pepper Arena in Frisco. 
Nicholas Axe, a former Frisco High School student, was honored and awarded with a $10,000 scholarship, a laptop, and a backpack. We decided that these, uh, we couldn't send our guys off to college without new swag. <laughs> Even though Axe's essay was about soccer, basketball legend Lieberman still felt it was worthy of the scholarship. He expressed his appreciation for what the program does. Here today, so I can personally thank you for your marvelous contribution. I cannot think of a better start to a great career. Thank you again. I'm Sean McGee for Frisco ISD TV. Well, that wraps up this episode of Frisco ISD TV. Join us next time where we catch flying discs at Memorial Stadium. And we learn new ways to solve problems. Math problems, that is. I'm Sandra Tinney. And I'm Ethan Newman. Thanks for watching. <laughs>